Here's the solution to my calculus one practice quiz on limits with infinity. So either we will have a limit as x going to infinity, or the expression somehow turns out to be infinity, but we will have to figure that out. But anyways though, make sure you guys go download the file. This is from my Patreon, and there are other quizzes as well. Go ahead and try them. The link is in the description. For this one, make sure you time yourself 20 minutes. We will have five questions. Now here we go. For the first one, we have the limit as x approaching infinity of this rational function. This is something that you definitely do not want to get wrong. Because all we have to do is to pick up the biggest power from the top, and then likewise from the bottom, and you compare them. They have the same degree, right? x to a second power, so they cancel. All you have to do is the coefficients, 4 over 6, reduce that to third, and then we are done. If you're taking my class, then I will say this is totally okay. However, I know that sometimes your instructor might want you to do it slightly more rigorously. So in that case, maybe you will have to do the following. When you have a limit as x going to infinity of a rational function, let's say we have 4x squared plus 5x plus 1 over 6x squared minus x minus 1. First, you want to see the term that has the biggest power, which is just the x squared, right? And you want to divide everybody by that x squared. So divide this by x squared, divide this by x squared, divide this by x squared, divide x by x squared. And by the way, I call them everybody because, yeah, they're just like people. That's why I say it. But technically, it's divide every term. Yeah, some people say, yeah, why do you call them everybody? Anyways. And then reduce it a little bit. Limit as x approaching infinity. This will give you 4. This will be 5 over x. This is just 1 over x squared. That's not t, that's a plus. And this is 6. And this is 1 over x and minus 1 over x squared. Now, as x going to infinity, if you have 5 over infinity, that will just be 0. So this term will go to 0. Likewise, 1 over infinity squared is also going to be 0. Likewise this, likewise that. And we will just have the constant 4 over 6. And of course, that's the same as 2 thirds. Now, for the second one, first we have the limit as x approaching infinity. And if we plug infinity into all the x's, the first part, we get square root of infinity, and that's going to be infinity. And then if you plug infinity to here, add 3 to it, and then do the square root, still infinity. And you see we have infinity minus infinity. This right here is in indeterminate form. Why? Because it's one of these right here. It's on my shirt. It's an indeterminate form. It says so right here. When it's an indeterminate form, we cannot draw any conclusion right away. The biggest common mistake is people just write infinity minus infinity equals zero and then move on. That is totally incorrect. So what are we going to do though? First, like always, when we have square roots, maybe try to conjugate. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom. So this right here is still just the top. By the conjugate, which is still the square root of the first part, and then you change the minus to a plus. And then the second part, square root, x squared plus 3. And then you are going to divide it by that. So top and bottom, right? So x squared plus 4x, and then plus square root of x squared plus 3. Now, when you multiply this by its conjugate, the result is just going to be the following. You pretty much just have to do the first term squared minus the second term squared because we have a minus b times a plus b. The result is a squared minus b squared. So it's just going to be the inside. So we will have x squared plus 4x. And then you keep the minus and the second term x squared plus 3. And remember, put parentheses around the second term. It's like this part, because we have a minus right here, you have to distribute. On the bottom, just keep it.
And now, of course, once we distribute, this is negative x squared minus 3, and this and that cancel. And we are just looking at the limit as x approaching infinity. The top is 4x minus 3 over this expression. Now, although this right here is not a rational expression because you are supposed to have a polynomial over polynomial to be a rational expression, but it works the same because you have the power. So as x going to infinity, on the top, you just care about 4x to the first power. The minus 3 is neglectable. Okay, from here though, you picked out the biggest power, which is going to be right here, right? That's x squared. But remember, that's inside the square root. So pick this, and right here, same thing, pick that. Now, as x going to infinity, square root of x squared is just going to be x. Usually you put an absolute value, but you know x is past the infinity, so the absolute value is not needed. Likewise, this right here is also going to be x. So this is going to be the limit as x approaching infinity. You just have to look at 4x over x plus another one, so that's 2x. And then reduce out the x, 4 over 2, you finally just get 2, and then you're done. Now for number 3. If we plug infinity into here and here, ln of infinity is infinity, because natural log is an increasing function with an bound. It goes to infinity. So ln of infinity is infinity, and then minus ln of infinity is infinity. Infinity minus infinity again. We have to do more work. But this time we cannot use the conjugate. So what do we do? Well, we have natural log minus another, so we can use the log property, just combine them, right? Ln of this one goes first on the top, and then over this right here goes on the bottom. Okay, now what though? Well, here is one thing that we can do. Notice that the inside is a rational function, which we can totally handle. Well, ln is a continuous function, so we can do the following. The limit of a ln function is the same as ln of the limit, because ln is continuous. So you can look at this as ln of, take the limit of x approaching infinity of this expression, first. It's kind of like just do the things inside out, that kind of thing. Now, once we have this, this is like what we did for question number one. We just have to compare 6x squared and also 2x squared. Of course, x squared are the same, cancel. 6 over 2 is 3. And remember, the answer is not 3 though. We have an ln from the outside. So the answer is ln3, and that's the answer for that. Now, for number 4, we have the limit as x approaching 1 from the right-hand side, inverse tangent of ln of x minus 1. Well, if we do the usual business, putting the 1 into the x, we are going to get the following. And for this right here, I'm just going to write it down like this. Inverse tangent of ln of 1 minus 1, like so. But we are going to see a trouble. 1 minus 1 is 0, that's okay. But ln of 0 is not okay. So what do we do? Now, for this right here, we will just have to work this inside out and then try to reason out the answer at each step. This is not 1, 1 plus. So this means it's just like a number that's a little bit bigger than 1. You can think about this as 1.001. So this right here is going to be approaching inverse tangent of ln of, if you have 1.001 minus 1, you don't get 0 exactly, you get 0 0.001, right? You really get 0 with a little plus right here. Now, we will just have to figure out what this is. And again, we're doing this inside out. To figure out ln of 0 plus, we will have to look at the graph for ln. This is the graph for lnx. I know the inside here is x minus 1, but if you are looking at ln of 0 plus, we can look at this graph right here. 
we need to get the limit as x approaching 0 from the right hand side of the natural log function. If you go to 0, which is right here, from the right hand side, you can see that the curve goes straight down. So this tells us that the limit as x approaching 0 plus of our natural log function is going to be negative infinity. So therefore, this inside is going to be approaching negative infinity. And just like what I mentioned it before, some people might like, like how we write this kind of things down here. One thing that you can somehow please them is that you can draw arrows to show that we are taking the limits. Okay? And make sure you have the plus or minus sign right here along the way as well. That would be really helpful. Now, finally, what about inverse tangent of negative infinity? Well, once again, we will have to refer to a picture. You have to know the inverse tangent graph. It has two horizontal asymptotes, one at negative pi over 2, the other one at positive pi over 2. And the graph looks like this. They do have boundaries, unlike the cube root. Cube root keeps going up, and then the other side keeps going down. But for inverse tangent, we have the bound here and also bound here, and that's called the horizontal asymptotes. And now, as you can see, inverse tangent of negative infinity, as x going to negative infinity, all the way to the left, the y value, it will be approaching negative pi over 2. So this right here will be approaching negative pi over 2. So you can just kind of write this kind of steps down, and then you finally can write this is equal to negative pi over 2. Now for number 5, we have the limit as x approaching 2, and then we have e to the 1 over x minus 2. First, notice that this is just a 2 without a plus or minus. So we technically have to do both. And if you just plug in 2 right here, we will get 1 over 2 minus 2, which is 1 over 0. Well, I know that's like undefined, but when we're talking about limits, we have to do it more carefully, right? So here we go. First, we will have to check the limit as x approaching 2. Let's do the plus right here first. And then we have e to the 1 over x minus 2. Now for this right here, make sure you plug in 2 plus. And this is just like a number that's a little bit bigger than 2, such as at 2.001. But I'm just going to write down this symbol here. We will get e to the 1 over 2 plus and then minus 2. Now I'm just going to work this inside out. So this part first. And this will be approaching e raised to the 1 over. We know 2 minus 2 is 0. But you should also know that 2 plus minus 2 is 0 plus. It's just a number that's a little bit bigger than 0, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, here we go. If we have 1 divided by 0 plus, this is a positive, this is also a positive. When you are talking about limit, if you have a non-zero number over 0, such as this form right here, you are going to get either plus infinity or negative infinity. But both of them are positive, so we know that it's going to be plus infinity. And now e to the infinity's power will also give you infinity. So as x approaching 2 from the right hand side, this right here gives us infinity. And the reason that this is going to give you infinity is because e to the x looks like this without any boundaries. So perhaps I'll draw that real quick right here. This is the e to the x graph. It goes up. Now, on the other hand, if we have the limit as x approaching 2 from the negative direction, this will be plugging here, we get e to the 1 over 2 to the, so 2 negative like this, and then minus 2. Now, this is going to be approaching e 1 over 2 minus 2 is 0, but 2 minus minus 2 is 0 minus. Why? Because this is like 1.009 minus 2 was negative 0 0.0001, right? So it's 0 minus. Again, 
A non-zero number over a zero like this, either you get positive infinity or negative infinity. On the top is positive, on the bottom this is negative. So this now is going to be approaching negative infinity. And then you can see that e to the negative infinity, if you look at this graph all the way to the left, the y value is approaching zero. So we are going to get this approaching zero. Well, we're not done yet. We have to answer this question. This has an answer, which is infinity. This also has an answer, which is zero. But unfortunately, the right limit and also the left limit, they are not equal. So what do we say? We go back here and say, this limit does not exist. And that's the answer for that. That's it.